My First Bible and Prayers The Creation Story In the beginning, before time began, there was nothing. Nothing to see, nothing to hear, nothing to touch or smell. There was only silence. God moved alone through the inky darkness. Then God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was covered by water. Let there be light, God said. It was faint at first, a flicker in the darkness that grew and grew. It became a glowing ball that pushed the gloom aside, soft and yellow, then red, pink, and dazzling gold. God delighted in its loveliness. The changing light seemed to have a life of its own, and God called it day. When the light faded into darkness, he named it night. It was the very first day of the world. On the second day, when the light came back, God made the sky. It was a soft, bright blue, and it hung over the earth like a canopy. On the third day of the world, God drew back the choppy waters so that solid ground appeared. The great pools of water, blue like the sky and shimmering in the light, he named them seas. He called the big, muddy areas of ground land. Grasses and plants of every size, shape, and color took root. Sweet-smelling flowers blossomed, sticky buds opened, and vines coiled upwards. Trees sprang from the ground, their branches reaching for the sky, growing tall and heavy with fruit. The earth had become lush and green and brimming with plant life. On the fourth day, God said, Let there be signs to mark the day and night. He made the fiery sun to show the day and the gentle moon to shine at night. During the day, the moon hid in the shadows. At night, the sun turned its golden face away while the moon cast its silvery beams over the land. God also brightened the night sky with millions and millions of tiny glittering stars. He felt pleased with the beautiful world he had created. God's new world was peaceful, filled with flowers, trees, rushing rivers, but there were no birds. There were no bees to buzz from flower to flower or fish to leap through the waves. The only sounds were the whisper of the wind among the leaves and the waves lapping the shores. On the fifth day, God filled the waters with living creatures. Suddenly, the sea was teeming with fish that moved as one. He made whales that sent great plumes of spray high up into the sky and dolphins that leaped playfully in and out of the waves. He made jellyfish that shimmered like moonlight, shellfish that sparkled like precious stones, and tiny crabs that waved their claws on the golden sands. Then God said, Let there be creatures of the air that will fill the sky with life. There began a great fluttering of feathers and flapping of wings, and a cloud of birds and insects of all shapes and sizes rose into the sky. Tiny chirruping sparrows mingled with colorful parakeets and silent gliding hawks. The sky was alive with color and sound as the twittering birds found shelter among the trees and bushes, discovered fruit, and washed their feathers in the bright streams. Their happy songs filled God, God's ears, and he blessed them. On the sixth day of the world, God said, Now let there be creatures on the land. And the earth began to shake with a thunder of a thousand feet. The world hummed with voices large and small, jostling to be heard. Regal lions prowled beside mighty elephants and rhinos. Monkeys swung through the trees, cackling to each other, and bears lumbered through the undergrowth. Fierce animals paced side by side with the gentlest of God's creatures. Everyone, from the tiny shrews to the tall giraffes, were looking for a new home. Some liked the cool of the snowy mountains, and some preferred the heat of the rainforests. Snakes slithered into the jungles, crocodiles hid in rivers, and squirrels climbed all the trees. The world was pulsing with life. God looked around and was happy with what he saw, but something was missing. Who will care for all the animals? God asked himself. He took handfuls of earth and shaped two creatures who looked like him. He called them man and woman. As God poured his breath into them, the man and woman began to move. They opened their eyes and stared around them in wonder. Slowly, they stretched their arms and legs and rose to their feet. They stood in front of God, holding hands as beautiful and innocent as the new world. God blessed them and named the man Adam and the woman Eve. Your job is to look after the wonders I have created, he said. You will rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the skies, and every creature on the earth. You will have fruit to eat and water to drink. I want you to enjoy your life here. God's work was done. The world was every bit as beautiful as he had imagined. It was the seventh day, and God rested.